today we're going to paint peonies four different ways. And let me tell you what, it's like a peony painting party up in here. Uh, sure, I love painting peonies from life and being all fancy like that. But my next watercolor peony fix is never further away than my keyboard. This is today's reference photo. She is so pretty. We're gonna be tackling four different peony personalities that I've named the following. Number one, the sketchy peony. Two, romantic. Three, moody. Four, classic. Now for supplies, I'm gonna be using one of my current favorites, which is the Arches cold press watercolor paper in the square format. I don't know, I just love this size. I'm gonna link everything below. We're gonna be using the Art for Joy's Sake watercolor palette, all of the brushes. And friends, I might throw in some surprises, like some fun pencils. Who knows, let's just see. Now let it be known that none of these peony styles are super realistic. Because let me tell you what, there are plenty of other much more qualified individuals to walk you through that kind of creative madness. Like, I mean, good, I'm in awe style madness. Yeah. First up, friends, we're gonna work on the Moody Peony. Let's do this. Okay, let's get into it. Spray that palette down and I'm grabbing my number 12 round brush. And I'm just getting some water on the page, friends, in a circular motion. And I'm just grabbing the pink, it's like a fuchsia, and pushing that color up from the bottom of that wet circle I just made, a little bit of red too, and let it flow. Remember kind of the, the source image for this. The main kind of bulk of the peony is that round, tight center. It's where all of the petals are emanating from, and it's where all of the petals are not even fully curled out or opened up from. And I'm building some simple petals out from that round center, letting some of the color run out. Notice, friends, sometimes I'm using kind of the side of the brush, which I know doesn't quite make sense because it's a round brush, there is no side. Maybe it's more of how I'm holding it to the side, and then sometimes I am just pressing straight down. But the bottom line is, is I'm not dragging and lifting for this type of petal because I don't really want a strong point on any of these petals. So I'm working side to side, up and down, but using kind of the middle part of the bristles. Rinse that brush, grab a little green if it makes you feel better about life. I know I'm the kind of person that needs to see a little green going on and add a little suggestion of a leaf there in the bottom right hand corner. Now I'm getting into smaller little detailed marks, relatively speaking detailed, around the outer center of that main circle. Always think back to the main circle. And you might be wondering, are you looking back at the reference photo? I am from time to time, sure. I wanna see which petals look like cups that are curving towards the front or facing me. I wanna see which petals are curving around the sides of the center of the flower. I wanna see which petals are coming towards me. Those are the bottom most petals that are kind of coming towards me or kind of going down towards the ground, those bright red ones. Rinsing my brush thoroughly and getting some more green going on here. Remember friends, this is our sketchy peony. So the painting portion of this at this stage is super light and airy. I'm not thinking detail, I'm not thinking glazing or layers. I'm thinking mindful brush strokes that are laid in a way that give a nice impression of a peony, but not a realistic impression of a peony. Also allowing myself to go right in with bold, bright, or dark colors where I feel like it, because again, it's kind of a one layer or maybe two layer situation at most. Grabbing that eighth inch dagger and doing a little suggestion of yellow at the center. Friends, I mix that fluorescent yellow with a little bit of peach so it's not an actual fluorescent. And then going in with some pink, a little bit of red, a little more pink, and we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of sketchy brush detail to some of the areas. Some dots, some dabs there at the center, some swishes, some simple light-handed stroke, which basically means not a lot of pressure on the brush. I'm going where petals converge and adding a little darkness to build up a little depth. I'm doing some linear detail into damp areas, like at the right upper hand corner there, you can see what I'm working on. Because everything is damp, these detail, quote unquote, detailed moments that I'm adding are diffusing immediately and not giving the impression of tight 
realism or anything near it. But at the same time, these detailed strokes, like that green I'm adding at the very bottom that's creeping up in between those two red petals, those kind of marks are giving a sense of what this thing is in an authentic and convincing way. Now, if you're getting a lot more explosion of color than I am at this stage, it just means that your paper is a lot more wet than mine. So blot up whatever areas got out of control and then take a moment, let it dry for a few more minutes and you'll be closer to the kind of dampness that my page is at. Heading back into this one, friends, this time it's a second layer, yes, but I'm still going loose and straight in with boldness with watercolor markers gosh i love watercolor markers they are my jam so earlier i went in where petals touched other petals like the little crevices of the flower oh gosh i did just use that word but seriously the crevices and that's where your shadows are going to be so that's where i'm kind of going in with this darker red and this isn't like a burgundy i would call this more of like a dark raspberry marker and I'm going into those crevices and adding a little touch or a little like V shape or a little notch. And then I can go back in with a clean damp brush and blend it out. The goal here isn't realism. The goal here is to elevate the structure of the overall peony a bit and to add depth and drama, but definitely not realism per se. Now, if you are using watercolor markers, remember that the moisture from one marker can blend out the color from another. And that's kind of what I'm doing here, working back and forth between this dark raspberry marker where I'm notching out shapes and making the overlap of the petals more obvious. And then I'm blending out with a lighter pink marker instead of just a damp brush. The important point here if you want to accomplish kind of the look that I am, is to not get too hung up on the details. And the kind of technique that we're using right now makes it really easy to try to get more and more and more detailed, and dare I say, even realistic. So just keep yourself in check, pull back, take a step back, breathe, observe, and just make sure that you're staying light and airy, light on detail, not light on color necessarily, but just give yourself a chance to evaluate so that you don't go more deeply with detail and realism than you really want to. Now, if you want to, that's cool, but that's not really what we're doing here. Going in with a damp brush now and just smoothing and zhuzhing and using some of the remnant color to make little squiggles like up there on the top left area of the petals. And you can see that, yes, I'm getting more definition, but I'm not making this look any more realistic. I am definitely getting a better sense of where the petals are and overlapping. But again, it's not super like accurate, so to speak. Going right in with dark blue greens. I've got my big, bold three quarter inch dagger now, and I'm making some marks in the upper left, using that as an opportunity not only to make leafy marks, but also to define some of the petals where they meet up with one another. Very abstract up here. You can see I'm dipping into the fluorescent with a dirty, dark brush. And I'm just making strokes with the broad side of my brush and then switching it up to the point of my brush. And what I'm getting is not actual leaf shapes, but I'm kind of getting this fuzzy, diffused, dark, greeny, maybe leafy background type of situation. All of this, friends, has been wet on dry, which I love. It gives you a lot of crispness, a lot of definition. Approaching the same way at the bottom right hand corner, but with more of a straight up blue and a lot less pigment on my brush. And notice how I just scrubbed out the color with whatever moisture was on my brush and let it just be and flow. Let some of the white of the paper show through and let the brush run out of color to create kind of like a texture on the page. The point here is to get in, make a mark, decide okay, I like the direction of this, and to continue to make more marks. Not the same marks necessarily, but similar marks, maybe different colors, maybe a little bit more water on your brush. There's no really like wrong way to do this here. Really, I promise you. Okay, I wanna let that background dry up a little bit. Watch where you're placing your hands. 
Uh, you can see my hand there on the bottom, but it is dry there already. I'm going in with an indigo marker. I am using even more of that technique where the petals overlap, where the crevices are. I'm adding detail, little dashes, little dots, just little zhuzhes of that dark, dark, intense color to just make things pop even more. And you can see, I'm not upping the ante on the realism, but I am upping the ante on the drama, the moodiness. Everything about this piece has been bold, saturated color from the first brush stroke to the last. And that's what kind of defines this particular look and this particular peony. It's about going all in with color right from the get-go and building from there. One kind of like caveat or one negative, possible negative to this type of approach is that you can get muddy or dingy quickly because you've started bright or dark. One thing you can do to prevent that is to work out a color palette in advance. I didn't do that, but it certainly could help if you're worried about, you know, starting too dark in a particular area or adding colors later on that maybe don't make sense. So in this particular case, I've got kind of corally reds, a little bit of pink, I've got a strong blue, I've got a bright green, I've got a little bit of fluorescent, and that's really it. So I know kind of the colors I'm working with and I'm knowing the values that I'm working with within those colors. Hopefully that made sense. Values, just as a reminder, is how light or how dark something is. So that said, my lightest value was my pinky corally reds. So I knew going in when I started laying down those pinky reds that they were going to be my lightest value. That was as light as I was gonna get. Whatever I added water to in that color family was the lightest I was going to get. Hopefully this is helpful. Friends, let me know, is this description, it's a little bit of a different way of approaching, describing a particular painting technique. Is it confusing? Do you have questions? Head into comments and let me know because it's important for me on this channel for you to kind of understand how I'm explaining things and I'm always evolving or at least I'm trying to. So if there's a better way, I want to hear about it. And also while you're at it, you know what I'm going to ask? You know what I'm going to ask? What am I going to ask? If you are getting something out of this video so far, go ahead and give this video a boop. That's a like friends and it really helps out my channel and it puts a smile on my face. So, okay. I have accepted the fact that this will not be a realistic piece. I accepted that fact from the beginning. Maybe you're in a place you're painting along and you thought maybe it would be more realistic starting out. Maybe you've had to make some concessions emotionally and mentally, but make them friends because it's still all good. It's all good. So I am adding more detail. I am adding more color zhuzhing here and there, but I'm not adding it with the expectation that it's going to make my piece more realistic. And you know what? Do what you gotta do to love your piece. I felt like I wanted a little bit of white, so I'm going ahead and adding it in. I did feel like my center area there, I had that weird like dark indigo thing going on that went straight up the middle of my peony, and I didn't love it. So the one way to get some of the lightness back, because I started so dark, was just to add some white. And it kind of flows with the white of my paper that I had going on in the composition. So I'm gonna be happy about it. Okay, friends, we're getting into the down and dirty of this. Down and dirty, what does that mean? I don't know, but it kind of works. Okay, I'm mixing up a super, super dark blue. Lots of blue, a little bit of brown. It's gonna work beautifully. I'm using the tip of my quarter inch dagger to add some linear detail throughout the piece. I am sticking with this blue because it kind of works. It's that indigo vibe that I was using from my watercolor marker earlier. I'm just adding in veins and I'm adding in detailing that just starts to make everything else pop. If you want more information about how to add linear detail to a piece, I've got some great videos on that and I'm gonna link them below, so check them out, but later. I'm even doing a little bit of watercolor sketching, which is basically where I go in and I'm not really creating forms with my brush, but I'm creating outlines. So imagine it's like sketching, but not with a pencil, a brush full of color. Yeah, you get it. Anywho, really fun way to fill up an abstract background to kind of 
make things a little more interesting in areas, and it's also a great way to add texture. But I'm keeping it moody with that indigo blue. All right, friends, bring him back in the white because I'm feeling it. I felt it at the very middle there where I was trying to, you know, correct a mistake. But now bringing it in because I just want to see more of that white. I'm sketching with it. Friends, have fun with this. Just because it's moody doesn't mean you can't bring in lightness. Let me say that again in a different way. For me, moody isn't just about dark colors and low contrast. Moody can be high contrast with the right selection of colors. So yeah, I'm still feeling a moody vibe here, even though I'm bringing in highlights of white. Now stick around friends, we've got three, count them, three more peonies coming. Now I promise you this one was a little bit more labor intensive and the other three are gonna be a little bit more zippity doo dog. get them done quicker. All right, now I'm gonna pop that peony inspiration photo up on the screen one more time so you can see what we're working with. I am working with that top peony, but if you wanna do the bottom or if you wanna grab your own inspiration photo, by all means, go for it. Next up, we have our sketchy peony. You're gonna need a pencil here, friends, and the softer, the better. So at least a 2B. If you have a 4B or a 6B, I'm gonna be super excited about it for you. I'm gonna start with the basic shapes. I've talked about mapping out basic shapes of flowers before. I will link a video or a few videos below on that topic. You're just gonna map out the center. You're gonna map out the basic forward facing petals, the ones that are coming or curling towards you. And we're gonna map out those little petals that are popping up and facing towards the sky. And yeah, you're just gonna get the basics in here, friends. Again, the goal isn't realism. I was so upfront about that. Some of those forward facing petals are gonna be like triangles, but with soft edges, no hard edges. And then friends, I want you to change the grip on your pencil. I want you to do this alternative pencil grip. Look at how I'm holding this. I'm not holding it between my thumb and my middle finger with my forefinger. I am holding it in a very different way, lower on the pencil where my, four, my pointer finger is kind of doing a lot of the action and all that pressure is downward facing and I am getting a thicker mark. I'm getting a mark that's creating a lot of texture against the cold pressed watercolor paper. And I am very much making sure to vary my pressure because some of these lines, I want them to almost be so thick that they're shadowy. So I started light. I got to a point where I felt good about the very, very basic structure of my sketchy flower. And then I started going in over top with this gorgeous gestural, high and low, light and dark, thick and thin, crisp and smudgy type of line work. And oh yeah, getting in some leaves here, friends, and I'm just letting it go. I'm still using that alternative pencil grip. If you wanna know more about this pencil grip, I'm going to link a video below. It's a really quick, fun video to watch. You, you basically give up a lot of control when you hold your pencil this way. And it, it lets your confidence and your tentativeness meet in a happy place. That's what this pencil hold does. And I know that kind of sounds crazy, but it takes away just enough control so that you're like, oh, can't do anything about it because I'm holding the pencil this way. And then that's where magical stuff starts to happen. So anyway, let's get in here wet on dry with some color. Now at this point, friends, it's all about you doing you. You could wet down all of the area that's going to be pink petals. You can do wet on dry like I'm doing mostly here. You could bring in really, really soft, almost opaque colors like pastels. You do you. I am doing something a little bit more specific where I'm laying down the color darker where again, the petals meet other petals or in those crevices. And then I'm rinsing my brush and blending out from the darkness. And that's creating kind of instant depth and instant shadows, but still in a very loosey goosey washy way.
Friends, one thing to keep in mind as you're doing the you thing here is you don't have to stay within the lines and you also don't have to hold yourself back. You can create some lines just with the watercolor brush that don't necessarily fill in or follow previously made pencil lines. And there she is. I told you this one was gonna be quick. This is a fantastic one, friends, if you need something quick, very satisfying, and yeah, it's a good one. Moving on. Next up, we got the Romantic Peony, friends. Let me tell you what, you're gonna wanna stick around. We are gonna end with the classic, but it's gonna be a twist on the classic. Okay, let me say this. The Romantic Peony is gonna start very similar to the Moody Peony. We're gonna go in with lots of color right off the bat, but it's not gonna be quite as strong and it's gonna be a little diffused, let me show you. Okay, so we're not going in with the bright color right off the bat technically because what I'm doing, instead of just wetting the paper with water, I am essentially wetting the paper with really, really washed out pinks and peaches. But then quickly, I go to my more intense colors. Now, I'm using a three quarter inch dagger brush. Friends, I want you to watch my brush. Let's actually, let's repeat that. Let, let's repeat that up until this point because it's so important to see. All right, let's see this. I loaded up that bright color and I'm using the tip of my brush and I am twisting the brush in between my fingers and I am making swoopy motions. That brush is dancing. That brush doesn't stop moving. I am using the hand-eye coordination that I know I have and that I know you have because you've been painting for here a little bit or maybe you're brand new to this and maybe you're just gonna watch and then give this a go because it's gonna be fun even if you have no idea what you're doing. But watch that brush it's dancing. I start to slow down as I add the more intense red, that second layer of red, but the brush is still dancing. The key to this is not worrying too much about petal placement and structure. You know you've got that ball of a center and you know you've got the petals coming out from it. That's all you need to know here. Let that brush dance. Let it twist, let it dance and then start adding in some leaves. The leaves are also dancing. They're not my classic press, drag, and lift leaves, friends. It's all about keeping that brush moving. I've talked a lot about Colby Bloom on this channel, and one thing that I learned from her last year is to keep that brush moving. Keep that brush moving in different ways, even when you don't feel like you know what you're doing, because the brush will lead you. The brush will eventually lead you and you'll start to get this like synergy with movement, even when the movement isn't planned. And it's a beautiful thing. Let that brush dance. I'm back to letting that tip of the brush dance, adding some very diffuse detail in the flower after I added those three or four leaves on the bottom right. And as you can see, this is a very diffused style. Remember, we started with very muted pinks and peaches, kind of wetting our paper from the get-go. Oh, friends, this might be my favorite one so far. Let me know. Are you a fan of the moody, the sketchy, or are you thinking you're feeling the romantic peony? I want you to head into comments and vote. I wanna see where we're at. And you know, if you're feeling like you have a moment, let us know why it's your favorite because you know, we just like to chat here, so. You know what else we like here, friends? We do like the boops. Okay, that was so bad, but oh my gosh, seriously, if you have a moment and you haven't done it yet, go ahead, give this video a boop. And there's also a little bell icon down there somewhere, depending on where you're watching this, you hit that bell and you're gonna get notified every time I upload something. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking you may not wanna miss my uploads because I think they're pretty cool. I don't know, but well, anyway, let's get back to painting. Okay, it's important that I say this here now. I have let my piece dry a little bit, but I'll tell you what, you could leave her exactly as she is right now. It's gorgeous, stunning. I almost, I'm just nervous at the fact that I am not gonna leave mine. I'm gonna head into Romantic Peony like 1.2. And how I'm doing that, friends, is I am mixing up just a kind of rich gray blue color. I've got my liner brush out and I am sketching with my liner brush. I'm holding that brush further down on the ferrule. I want more control, but I'm almost holding my brush perpendicular. So here is why. Liner brush are longer. Mine is about an inch long. Those bristles are long and they bend and they're kind of unwieldy, right? So you're gonna get some of the control back by holding the brush further down on the ferrule and holding your, your handhold is perpendicular, almost perpendicular, it's not exact. 
but you're going to get the best of all those worlds because you're going to get the grace and the fluid kind of line quality and loveliness that happens with a liner brush. So I'm just going along and I'm basically like outlining the basic structure and shapes of this peony. I'm defining some of the petals. You can see that forward facing petal there that's kind of just right of center. You can see that other kind of petal that's curling and hugging the center of the flower up there on the top right. I'm defining this leaf here up on the top right and I'm doing it all with blue gray, super saturated linear watercolor details. That's it. I would suggest a warm up here, friends. I do have a liner brush drill video. I'm going to link that below if you feel you want to do a warm up before you add your linear details because it can really help get some muscle memory going, all the things. So the reason I call this romantic is because everything about this style is fluid. The underpainting that's super soft and washy and diffused, and even the detailing that we're adding here now is still very soft and airy and, and slightly whimsical, more elegant. It's like elegant, elegant, whim, uh, whimsically elegant. Uh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Hopefully friends. I don't know. I do. I still think this is like my favorite and I'm so glad I went in this direction. I'm so glad I didn't leave it as is. You know what? Do two. Do one where you leave it and do one where you do the outline. Yeah. A few more tips before we move on to our final peony with this liner brush, friends. You want to load it with 60-40. 60% pigment, 40% water. That is kind of the key. You want to make sure that you don't have a little bead at the end of your brush. That means you've got too much paint on your brush and know that you're going to have to reload often because that little boy, boy, bad boy, whatever, can't hold a ton of paint. Oh, and last but not least, keep your arm loose. Don't tense. If you feel tense, stretch out your hands and your arms. I'm not kidding. I talked about this in a video a while back. Like do a little bit of stretches with those fingers. It'll make a difference, I promise. All right, here's the final look at the romantic peony and you bet your butt I went in with some white. Did we like the white? Was the white a good choice? I, I, I do like the white. I love that rightmost leaf where the pink is bleeding into the green. Oh, And you know what friends, get into a habit of complimenting parts of your painting that you do love. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing bad about it. And it's a good habit to build on this creative journey that can be so darn hard on the brain, right? If you agree, let me know in comments, just say agree. All right, our classic peony. And you might be wondering, well, Christy, what in the world does classic mean to you? Because we all know there ain't much classic about me. Well, stick around and find out. We're gonna start out by roughing in. I'm using a 3H pencil. This is a vintage pencil, so if you don't have 3H, use 2H. And I am actually being more careful. I want this peony to be a little bit more realistic, so I am looking for ovals. I am looking for teardrops. I am looking for triangles that have, you know, rounded edges, not pointed edges. I'm looking for circles. Did I say circles already? I don't know. That is how I want to start this. And because I am using a lighter pencil, it's a harder graphite, so it's going to make a lighter mark on the page. It's giving me the time and opportunity to make decisions and edit as I go in this roughing out sketch. Now, I am going to let these pencil lines shine through, even though this is a classic peony, it's a little bit more realistic but I do love the look of pencil lines that show through. And so we're gonna just let that happen. You'll notice as I'm moving through this sketch, I am starting to apply more pressure. As I'm getting more confident in the placement of my petals, I am adding little ins and outs, little bumps, little divots, little notches to make the petals and the way they're interacting with one another a little bit more realistic pulling out the eraser because remember, I'm going a little bit more real to life. And so I'm not gonna be using paint as expressively and as boldly as I have in the previous three peonies. I'm also using that eraser to define where one petal is going on top of or underneath another petal. So I may have made some basic shape marks in the beginning that need to be erased in order for the overlaps to kind of come across convincingly. 
And so that is where the eraser comes into play. I will say this though, if you find yourself getting into an eraser loop, and that is where you have used an eraser like 10 times or more in, I would say two to three minutes or more, then you need to take a break, take a pause, take a breath, because that is not the way to be and your eyes need a break. So just remember, don't get into an eraser loop. Feel free to embellish or omit based on your inspiration photo. You can clearly see I'm doing that. I'm adding petals where they're not in the photo and so on. And feel free, friends, I think I'm all almost in an eraser loop. So maybe there's a caveat. I'm using my eraser in a very intentional way. Again, I'm trying to make sure that some of the basic shape lines that I did before aren't showing through. But yeah, you know, keeping it real here, keeping it real. All right, I've added in some leaves, just a few little sprigs of leaves got coming down on that bottom right corner. And now it's time to start in with the watercolor. Here is the amazing news. This technique is extremely similar to the technique we were using all along. And what do you mean, Christy? I mean this, where the petals, where the crevices, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm never gonna be able to use that word again where the crevices are, where the petals are meeting one another, you're gonna apply darker color. And then with a clean wet brush, you're gonna blend out from that dark color or intense color out and fully to the white of the paper. So like an ombre, right? The only difference here, friends, is that I am not going in with as intense of a color in the very beginning stages, as you can see here. As your painting friends, keep in mind, you don't have to stay within the lines that you've sketched previously. You can use your brush as a means for sketching. So what do I mean? Kind of like what I'm doing here in the bottom right hand corner, just above those leaves that are sketched out, but not painted yet. So here I'm applying the intense color with a few swishes of the brush, kind of like ocean waves and then rinsing and blending out. So I'm just applying that bold color in a little bit of a different way, leaving behind some of the sketchy marks my brush made. Okay, friends, a few things to point out here as we continue through. I am not using a really wet brush or making my page super wet. I'm kind of keeping it in the damp realm, and here's why. Number one, it's giving me a lot more control. It's allowing me to add color and allowing bleeds to happen, but in a much more relaxed and slow kind of way. So you're not getting those big 
fast explosions of color. Number two, it's allowing me to keep the intense color intense where I want it to be. Again, because it's not exploding and washing out into puddles of water on the page. And number three, it's giving me the opportunity to add linear details as I'm working, but those details are diffusing because the paper is damp. So I'm not getting that crisp, hard look. I'm getting a softer, more romantic, more natural way of adding detail. Continuing here, friends, and you'll notice that as I'm working, I'm kind of creating a more classic structure to the way I'm applying color. What does that mean? I started out soft and light. I'm adding more darkness and intensity to my reds, for example, as I work through the painting, as the painting evolves. I'm using just a little bit of a dirty purple here added to the red to create my shadows. And because I'm painting quickly, everything is staying pretty damp all along the way. So the goal here is to let the more realistic edge of this peony shine through, but not in kind of a overt way. So what does that mean? Yeah, this is the most realistic peony I've done in this series, but is she super realistic? No, but she definitely is more controlled. So let me know in comments, friends. Do you like this more controlled version? Is this your favorite? And if it is, I'd love to know why and what you might do when you try this. How might you change this more controlled approach to the peony? I really held back there. I typically like to add my greens in pretty early in a painting just to kind of get a sense of where I'm at, but I held out and I'm loving it so much right now. I went a little bit more bold with the, the leaves uh, went in pretty intensely with that dark emeraldy bluish green right off the bat, but it totally worked out. Heading into the center of the peony here with a nice creamy opaque peach and just adding some upward strokes with the tip of my quarter inch dagger to just give a little bit more definition because again, that center of the peony is so just, it's the quintessential, like just started to bloom peony. It's what you expect to see of a peony that's kind of midlife and in its prime. And I really wanna draw attention to that. If you're anything like me, you probably haven't gotten your fill of peonies. So this video where I do peonies three more ways is going to be your perfect one to watch next. And until next time, friends, I wish you lots of happy painting.